Commander Xegeus, and today we'll be looking at Thargoid Interceptor Combat. These are the large Thargoid crafts which are extremely difficult to destroy, especially solo. As they are much more difficult than any human NPCs, we'll look at where to find them, what ships and outfitting to use, and some general techniques in combat. This will be a beginner's guide rather than an advanced combat tutorial. Let's begin by looking at some appropriate ships and builds. For new commanders, you'll want to start out by engaging interceptors in a wing, as while they can be taken down solo, it'll require a very well-built ship and a great deal of skill. You won't necessarily need a fully engineered ship, but it is highly valuable. You'll also want a hull tank ship, most commonly with a biweave shield, although a prismatic cell bank and hull tank ship can work as well. In medium class ships, the Chieftain, Challenger, or Crate work very well, as you can get a great deal of hull along with capable shields. All the large class ships also work well given their extremely high hull and shield abilities, however their high cost and therefore high rebuys can make them prohibitively expensive as you are likely to be destroyed several times in your early attempts. Optimal hull strength is very important as the Thargoid's weapons and swarm do phasing damage, meaning they'll damage your hull through your shields. Like the Thargoid scouts, they do absolute damage, meaning resistances aren't important where base hull and shield strength are. So in engineering, you'll want to choose blueprints such as Heavy Duty for your armor and hull reinforcements. For shields, you'll want to use either the reinforced or enhanced low power blueprints on the generator and Heavy Duty on the shield boosters. You'll also want at least a single heat sink as weapons like the Gauss Cannon generate a lot of heat and if you take caustic damage, you'll possibly be burning that off by running your heat above 180%. For your utilities, you're going to want a shutdown field neutralizer and a Xeno scanner. While you can win an encounter without these, it is far more difficult. Depending on your build, you can also add a decontamination limpet and a cargo rack so you can clean off your and your wingmate's caustic damage without taking heat damage. For your weapons, if you're serious about Thargoid combat, you'll want the Gauss Cannon, as it is the most effective of the Guardian modules, outfitting at least one, if not two, depending on your ship and build. These are extremely effective at destroying the Thargoid hearts, more on that shortly. The other Guardian weapons, the Shard Cannon and Plasma Charger, are also very useful, with the Shard Cannon being excellent for the shields and the Plasma Charger great at exerting the hearts for attack. For the most part, you can leave your human weapons in space dock. If you've not yet unlocked the Guardian weapons, which I do highly suggest, you'll need to use the AX Multi Cannons and AX Missiles. Missiles are highly effective against the shields and to exert the hearts, and generally best in fixed variety, where Multi Cannons are well suited to destroy the hearts where you'd likely choose turreted, making it far easier once you've sub-targeted the heart. Finally, you're going to want the Flak Launcher, as it's the only way to attack the Swarm. Ship Launch Fighters provide an additional target for the Interceptor and Swarm to engage, taking some of the fire. Now that we're outfit, let's head to an appropriate system and look at how to dispatch these difficult opponents. As for finding them, they often spawn in systems that are under attack or have stations in repair, with the most consistent area being in the Pleiades Nebula. HR 1183, HR 1185, and the systems surrounding Maya are excellent choices. You can also look for missions on the board in these systems, as they will indicate an appropriate system to find them. Visiting the Anti-Xeno Initiative Discord is also a great idea, as they work with Canon Research and share locations that are currently under attack. Once you arrive in system, you'll be looking for non-human signal sources of threat 5 or higher. The details of each signal source type are on screen now. Okay, we've outfit and found a bug. Now how exactly do we take down one of these beasts? Let's start by setting the expectation that these are extremely hard to destroy, far harder than any elite level NPC, beaten only by human NPC combat. As such, you'll likely want to tackle them with a wing first, starting with a threat 5 which will contain a Cyclops variant. Once you drop in on the instance, you'll deploy your hardpoints and select your Xeno scanner. While you can kill them without scanning, doing so is the only way to know its strength and exactly which heart has been exerted. You can see this visually, however, if you're using a turreted weapon, scanning is the only way to specifically target those weapons. You must be within 500 meters of the Thargoid for the scan. You'll want to do this before you deploy a fighter or open fire, as once the Thargoid becomes angry, it will move so quickly that it's very difficult to perform the scan later. When you first approach one, it will scan you and likely not attack until you've fired the first shot. Once the attack has begun, you'll want to quickly exert one of the hearts. You'll see this visually as one of the petals will turn bright red 
and in your sub-targets you'll see that one of the hearts is in exerted state. Target that heart either visually or by selecting the sub-target and focus your attack there. As you destroy each heart, the Thargoid will raise its shields. This is the only time human weapons are effective, with Guardian weapons continuing to be the better choice. After each heart is destroyed, the Thargoid will use a different strategy, each of which is listed on screen now. While the projectiles fired by the Interceptor are very powerful, so is the attack from the Thargon Swarm. It is possible to just tank the fire from the swarm, but it's generally a far better idea to engage it using your flak launcher. This is used in a different way to other weapons, where once it's fired you'll hold the trigger with the projectile exploding when you release the trigger. As it approaches the swarm, you'll see a visual indicator around the shot to show how close it is to the swarm. This will allow you to explode the shell as close as possible to the swarm, destroying several with each volley. Once you've destroyed the swarm, or enough that they are no longer a significant threat, it's time to return our attention to the Interceptor. Depending on the Interceptor you attack between Cyclops, Basilis, and Medusa, you'll need to be ready for the Thargoid's shutdown field. This EMP-like blast will cover all ships in the instance and can only be countered with a shutdown field neutralizer. Again, you can destroy an Interceptor without this module, but as once shut down you're a sitting duck, use of it is highly suggested. It works much like the ECM, where as you fire and hold the trigger, it radiates a field around you, and importantly around other ships in the area, preventing the shutdown from occurring. It has a maximum range of 3 kilometers, building to that range as you hold the trigger. If you fired it off too soon and it dissipates before the shutdown field hits you, you'll then still be shut down. I suggest when you hear energy surge detected, or see the Thargoid turn blue, count to 3, then fire off the neutralizer. Energy surge detected. You'll need to make sure you have pips in systems and that your capacitor isn't too low, as if that's the case, you'll be unable to use it. Another of the Thargoid's very powerful attacks are its force lightning like effect, where it will grab you with a yellow lightning weapon, bringing you to a near stop. It must be within 800 meters to use this weapon, and it will light yellow before it fires. Here, the best strategy is to ensure you stay further than 800 meters, generally turning and boosting away with flight assist off. That way, if he does grab you, there is a chance you'll float away during the attack. If you are grabbed, return fire as much as possible, likely using heat sink if you are using the Gauss Cannon to ensure you don't overheat. The hull damage from this weapon isn't nearly as significant as the shield damage. If you're running a high shield build with cell banks, you'll want to pop one immediately, However, it is still very likely you'll lose your shields. As soon as you're out of its clutches, get as much distance as possible as many times the Interceptor will repeat this attack in quick succession. Once you've destroyed the last heart, you'll need to strip its shields one last time, then finally destroy its remaining hull. Once destroyed, you'll be treated to a very satisfying explosion, both visually and audibly, and will be rewarded with a combat bond of either 2, 6, or 10 million credits based on the Interceptor variant. After the explosion, the Interceptor will leave a rather large and ever-expanding caustic cloud, which you'll need to be very careful to avoid. Given the concentrated nature of the cloud, flying through it many times will result in your death. If you wait, the cloud will dissipate, allowing you to collect the Thargoid heart and any other materials dropped. The heart can be sold on the black market, but isn't very valuable, becoming more of a trophy than anything. Hopefully this look at Interceptor combat will have you and your friends killing these impressive ships in no time. Once you're comfortable with the process, you can attempt them solo, starting with the Cyclops variant. Realize that the difficulty level increases dramatically from each level, and while soloing a Cyclops isn't terribly difficult, a Basilisk and Medusa are a very different story. Save for PvP combat, this is the most demanding and highest skill combat in the galaxy. Once again, this has been Commander Exegius, reminding you to fly dangerously, and thanks for watching. If you're new to Thargoid Combat, I suggest starting with the smaller and easier scouts in our previous tutorial. You can also join me and ask questions on my weekly live streams, Tutorial Tuesdays, and the Creators Roundtable each Friday, and I hope you'll consider supporting my efforts via Patreon.